conclude the workshop results, we have one more presentation. I would like to give the arena to former member of European Parliament, Mr. Christian Engström, who has calculated a concrete basic income proposal for Sweden. Please welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, um, my name is Christian Engström. This is a proposal for how to implement uh, basic income in Sweden. And the reason I, I made this proposal, or sort of draft proposal, is to, to, to try and, try and uh, make, make the discussion a bit more concrete, because uh, sometimes uh, discussions about basic income tend to become very, very visionary, which is fine. But uh, uh, that means we have a vision uh, to, to steer for. But uh, we, uh, I think it's time to, to start looking at sensible, reasonable first steps to actually move to, towards those visions. Uh, so it's a proposal. Uh, I've been, been writing about it on, on my blog. You can see, see the address here. It's in Swedish. Uh, uh, all of it is in Swedish, but, but, I, but I hope ma many of you do, do read Swedish. Uh, I presented this uh, idea as a series of uh, some 20 uh, blog posts and then uh, with each of them I made sure I, I uh, put a link to that blog entry in the Facebook uh, Swedish Facebook discussion about basic income. Uh, there, there is a very active Facebook group called uh, Medborgar Lön istället för Arbetslinjen, which is a really, really crappy name, so I won't even bother to translate it. But the Facebook group is very, very good because it's very active, and it's sort of, that's where everybody who's interested in, in the subject in Sweden is, which is very, very good because it means uh, you can float an idea and, and you can sort of get, get a very good feeling for, for what people feel about it. And, uh, so, th so that's very good, and, and this proposal has been, been discussed there quite, quite extensively, which, which of course makes it, me very happy. So okay, basic income. The first question is of course, is it possible at all? Uh, and the answer to that is very simple, yes obviously, because we already have basic income, sort of. No, like that, hello? Okay, <laughs> should, I, should I stay away from, from some part of the... Uh, no. Okay, okay. Uh, nobody in Sweden starves to death for economic reasons. Almost nobody sleeps outside for purely economic reasons. So, I mean, obviously we're already allocating the, the real resu resources that are necessary to, to give everybody food at the end of the day and to give everybody a roof over, over their head. But for somebody who finds himself or herself in the situ situation where, where she needs the support of society, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, I usually say, if you, if you want a good introduction to, 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 the, to the welfare systems as they are now, read The Castle by Kafka. Uh, excellent book, really, really funny. If you, loved, if you like Dilbert, you love Kafka. And that, it sort of describes uh, how it works. So we've got legislation that says that everybody ha has a right to, to survive in our country, as in all the Nordic countries, it's, uh, indeed all, all, the, all the European countries, uh, I would say. But we have enormously complicated systems that, that, that uh, produce a lot of insecurity and a lot of humiliation for the, for the people who, who are exposed to it. And I mean, why, why are we paying for that? Yes, we should pay to, give, to make sure that, that everybody survives, because I, I don't want people dying outside where I live. So, I mean, we definitely should that, uh, do that. But I don't want to pay a lot of money to make people feel degraded, make people feel insecure because they don't know what's going to happen. So, yes, of course, since we're already, already paying for it, let, why, why not try and make it more sensible and possibly cheaper? So the problem is, uh, I think uh, the welfare systems uh, in the Nordic countries are fairly similar, I believe. Uh, but, uh, but of course, uh, there are uh, differences. But uh, uh, if you've got social assistance, which is sort of 
the basic thing, socialhjälp, socialbidrag, försörjningsstöd. They keep renaming this thing all the time because there's so much stigma attached to it. So after a while uh, the word becomes unusable and they, they invent a new word. They don't invent a new system, but they invent a new word, which is very, very confusing to a Swede. And, and <laughs> The good thing about speaking in English is I can, I can invent my own terms in English and, and translate them. So I'm calling this social assistance. And that is really the jaws of the welfare trap because it destroys the people who, who it's supposed to help. Uh, it's means tested, which means that, that, that there is a social, uh, uh, social officer that, that really looks, uh, uh, goes into detail. You have to meet that person, you have to discuss with her, she will go through your bank account every month to, to make sure that you're behaving in the way that the, she or uh, well, the system thinks you should, etc. Because, uh, and then she makes a decision. Because it's a person making a decision, it's arbitrary. I mean, uh, depending on uh, uh, if you have a go good so so social, uh, social officer, uh, uh, you might get it. If, you, if you're unlucky, you might not. Uh, so so there, there's a lot of in insecurity for, for the person who gets this, this benefit. And it's very, very humiliating to have somebody go through it your bank account every, every month. Uh, they, can, they, can, they don't do, do it all the time, but they can. They have the right to, to, go, uh, uh, to visit your home to make sure that you don't have any Picassos or Chagalls hanging on the walls. Uh, because if you do, you would have to sell them. Uh, I mean, what's the, how, how many of the people who have ever employed for social assistance did have a Picasso on the walls? So I, I would be very interested in that n number. But the problem here is you have to be totally destitute to get social welfare. So if you have some money in the bank, well, uh, make sure, uh, then you can't get in any money from the state because you have to, have to make sure that, that your bank balance is zero. You're not allowed to have too expensive things in your home. If you have a car, you're, you're not allowed to have it. If you, ha if you have a small company, you're most certainly not allowed to, to have it. I mean, that, that's the very, very first thing uh, you have to do. And this is incredibly destructive. If we, if we take, take an imaginary person, he's not really managed to get, to get a proper job, but he, he, mo most of the time he manages to, to sort of... Uh, uh, yeah, he manages by, by doing uh, odd jobs here and there. He's got, got, a, got an old car and he's got some tools so he can do some stuff. But then uh, one or two months, there simply are no jobs, so he has to, has to go to, to uh, apply for, for social assistance. Well, uh, like I said, the very first thing, he has to get rid of his uh, small company, has to get rid of his car, has to, to get rid of uh, his tools. Okay, suppose a couple of months later that, that things lighten up, there would be work for him. Well, now he can't take that work. Uh, because. Uh, the system that we have designed have, have really made sure that, that, that he, once he gets uh, social assistance, once, the system does everything it can to, to try and keep you on social. Uh, see, it's, 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 uh, you wouldn't think it's some kind of mobile operator with the terms of, of conditions. I mean, they do that way. Of course, this, this was never intentional, but the, that, that is what we have ended up with. And a really big problem is that you've got 100% marginal effect. So if you get uh, social assistance, you manage to make some money, then uh, your benefits are, are reduced by exactly the same amount. So, so unless you get a real proper job, so you can get off so social assistance completely, there is no economic in incentive whatsoever to take job. Again, which is obviously very destructive. Then on the next tier, slightly better but still not very good, uh, Arbetsförmedlingen. Uh, the, the, here I translated it to the unemployment agency. I, 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 I realized uh, uh, after I made the, those slides, they prefer to be called the, the employment agency. It doesn't really matter because they, they don't provide any employment or unemployment anyway. What they do is hand out benefits. Again, uh, in a very, very bureaucratic way, uh, it's 
tied to activities. You have to do certain things. You have to spend uh, like 40 hours a week applying for jobs, even if it's obvious to yourself and to, to your, your jobs officer, uh, you're never going to get a job anyway, but you still have to do it. Uh, it's a bureaucratic maze. Uh, there are so many rules that you have to follow and, and uh, <laughs> they sometimes contradict each other and uh, it's really, really complicated. Uh, and also it's time limited. Uh, it's income related, so, so if you have a good, good reasonable, reasonable paying job, uh, you get unemployed. Uh, in the beginning you get 8%. Uh, of your salary, but that drops very, very rapidly. And then uh, there, there is a final, uh, uh, yeah, fi final point. It's supposed to, to be timely, so, so that after a certain period of time, you don't get any benefits at all. But uh, the way the system is set up is then, then uh, the empl or employment agency will put you on some course and then you will be qualified for, for, for new benefits, etc. So it takes a while, but, but in principle at least it's time, time limited. So, and if you for one reason or another disqualify yourself for, for, for getting these unemployment benefits, well, then it's down to the so social assistance, which is like even more destructive. So the question is, could we design something better? And like I said, I want, I want to be concrete, I want to be here and now, I, uh, I don't want to be more visionary than necessary, so to speak. So I want to have a system that's economically re uh, realistic in the sense that you can yeah, do, 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 the, do the math uh, without having to, uh, having to uh, very often when, when politicians want to do something, they, they present a, a proposal, which is expensive, and then they say, well, dynamic effects will pay for it. Uh, maybe they will, but maybe they, they won't. I want to have a system that, that you can ma make ends meet without having, having to hope that fantastic magic things are going to happen. I do hope that fantastic magic things are going to happen, but let's see. <laughs> Uh, but the se second one is per perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, even more interesting, politically re realistic. There's no, uh, s some proposals for basic income, they say, okay, le let's get rid of all, uh, all uh, so social welfare programs, let's replace them with, with basic income. Uh, that would be very impossible, unless... Uh, and, uh, okay, it could work if the basic income is so high that it's higher than any, any of the existing benefits. But I mean, then it's not going to be economically realistic. If it's economically realistic, then some groups would lose out. In particular, uh, uh, people with d disability functions, uh, d disability pensions, uh, people who are long-term long long -term sickness. Those are income related as well. I mean, imagine that you're a politician, you put forward a proposal, uh, you're on television, uh, they will first show, show, uh, uh, show a family uh, with, with, with one or two disabled family members who will get their benefits reduced drastically, and then you're in the studio and the reporter asks, well, uh, you're, you're proposing to, to take away half, their, uh, half the money for, for this family. How do you defend that? Uh, mm, well, you can't. You obviously can't. And every politician who's ever been on television knows that. So if you're an activist trying to present uh, something that you want politicians to... to uh, you're presenting ideas that you want politicians to steal. I mean, we're pirates. We, we like when people steal ideas. Our ideas in particular. I mean, that's not going to happen. So, so, so it has to take the political uh, things into con consideration as well. I should add that, that I mean, personally, I, I don't even want to, to, to lower the disability pensions for a lot of people. But even if I did want that, it would still be impossible. Uh, another example, in the first presentation we saw, uh, that was a very good illustration of this point. If you ask uh, people, uh, how do you feel about basic income, 70% or whatever said, it's a good idea. Then you ask, how do you fe feel about basic income if we have to raise the, the tax as much as we would have to raise it? 
then 70% say it's a bad idea. So uh, raising, ta raising the income tax for, for, normal, uh, for normal incomes, uh, that's also more or less politically in uh, impossible because no matter how good your, your, your proposal is for what it's actually meant to achieve, all the focus will, will be on, on, on the uh, 50 euros that, that a normal family is going to lose each month. That's what the discussion is going to be about. So for that reason, I, I specifically designed this uh, proposal without, making any raise, uh, without raising any income tax at all. I'll get back, uh, back to that. <coughs> so, right, here's the proposal. Uh, 8,333 Swedish kroner per month. Why that particular? Well, it's 100,000 a year. So, so uh, and it is sort of where uh, it's, not, it's not, not, not only numerology <laughs> that, that 100,000 a year is a nice figure. This is roughly where, where, where the current benefits are. Uh, social assistance in Sweden is divided into two parts. There's the general assistance, uh, which is uh, about 400 euros, 3,800 kroner. And then you get a housing allowance, which is up. It depends, it varies with the local authority, etc. Uh, but but for, for a single person without children, it's usually, uh, there, there's a limit around five, 500 euros. So 900 euros uh, is as close, uh, I mean, uh, since, since it varies uh, with the housing cost, you can't get, get an exact number, but it, it's as close as I can get to, to what the current level is. Now, it could be argued that this is too, too little, uh, because if, you, if you're on social assistance, uh, you can get some extra money. If you get dental problems, uh, you, you will get extra money to, to go to the dentist, etc. So, Perhaps it should be a little more, but, but okay, so, so, so some, somewhere between 900 and perhaps 1100 euros. That seems to be what most people in this Facebook group in Sweden feel is, is a reasonable level. But anyway, I, I, I did this rough cal calculation on, on the lowest possible because I want, I want a full, I want a livable basic income. I, I don't want a partial basic income because then uh, some of the financing or most of the financing will be removing current system. If you, if you have a basic income that is too low to live on, then you can't really remove any of the existing systems. So, so yeah. So and, anyway, about, about nine, 900 euros to everybody between 19 and 64. Uh, Again, many, many, many people who talk about basic income uh, say it should go to everybody. Uh, okay, you could make a system like that. I don't want to make a system like that. Pensioners already have basic income. I mean, that's the very definition of pension. You get money every month. You don't have to do anything. No, nobody uh, cares what, what you do with it. It's your own business. So they already have it. You could argue that, that pensions are too low. Uh, good sensible arguments for that, but if you want to do something about that, uh, you don't need to invent a new system. You just raise the levels, uh, the, the basic pension, the grundpensionen. It's fairly expensive to do, but, but it's very easy from a technical point of view. Same, or similar thing with, with children. Children are already supported, uh, whether they work or not. Uh, they're not supposed to work. And, uh, but anyway, they, they are supported by the, the, their parents according to law. But uh, it's, well, uh, the people in the middle, between 19 and 64. Why do I say 19, uh, not 18 or 20, which would be more common? Because 19 is, is the age where, where it's most common to leave secondary school, gymnasium. Uh, about 70% of, of uh, pupils leave the gymnasium when they're 19. Uh, so, okay, it's not going to be perfect. I mean, there, there are 18 years old, 18 year olds who don't go to school, who have a family, who, who would re are uh, well, adults in every sense, and, and they would need it. Uh, there are some people who still live. Uh, to, uh, live with their parents and, and uh, go to school. But, uh, okay, 19 anyway is sort of the best compromise. 
Because I don't, I specifically don't want to say that uh, you, you get it once, once you're no longer in secondary school, because that would be an economic incentive for, for people to leave uh, secondary school prematurely. So we don't, don't want to do, uh, there are lots and lots of details where, where you probably have to be very, very careful. But again, this is a draft, uh, the purpose is to, that we should be able to discuss it, and I'm sure, sure that lo lots of things will come up. To everybody living in Sweden, very important, not connected to citizenship. Uh, in Swedish, uh, uh, basic income is unfortunately sometimes called medborgarlön, uh, which means citizen's salary. Bad name for two reasons. One is salary means that that's what you that's compensation for doing something, and that's the very opposite of basic income. But more importantly, citizens might lead people to think that it would only be for Swedish citizens. That's not how how our social service systems work today. In Sweden, in Sweden, we have 10 million inhabitants. About 750,000 are not Swedish uh, citizens. The largest individual group is Finns, uh, there are 60,000 60, Finns living, living in Sweden. Many of them have lived there for decades, paid taxes, uh, uh, done everything. Really, I mean, we obviously can't uh, present a system that would suddenly put all these people on the street without any, any, any means of supporting themselves if they happen to, to be without a job. One of the arguments you often hear against basic income is that, oh, this is going to be so good that everybody in the whole world will want to, want to move to our country and just live off of our basic income. That's, a, uh, that's not a valid argument. Already, <laughs> there are, there's probably a billion people who would want to move to Sweden. Uh, but they can't, because it's illegal. If you're an EU citizen, you're allowed to move to Sweden if you have a job or if you're looking for a job and get one within three months. If you're not an EU citizen, you're not allowed to move to Sweden at all, unless you get a special permission because you've got uh, refugee uh, reasons or, or, or things like that. So, I mean, we, uh, it's unfortunate. I hate the fact that we, we have closed borders, but we do. Every, every European country, every country does, in fact. So, so, I mean, that's not going to change. There are rules for determining who is eligible for, for, the, for the welfare systems uh, today. I propose no changes at all to, to those rules. So it's, no, it's not a problem that, that will increase uh, with, with basic income. So, okay, th this is the basic model. Um, Money for nothing to. Uh, uh, this is. Uh, in the previous slide, uh, I, say, I said, uh, given to everybody that doesn't have another income. Now, again, so, some uh, proposals for basic income say that everybody should get it, even millionaires, even people who make, uh, well, uh, have a good salary. Uh, the problem with that is that, that it's impossible. It's clearly impossible. Uh, you, you can do the math easily. Uh, 100,000 per year, uh, 10 million people in Sweden would be 1,000 billion Swedish kroner a year. Now, uh, I'm going to be talking quite a lot about, about uh, numbers in, in billions of Swedish kroner, uh, which won't really make any sense to, to any of you for two reasons. It's the wrong currency and it's the wrong uh, size of population. So, so, I mean, even if it was in euros, you couldn't transfer it to Finland or, or Iceland or, or anything. So, so, what's interesting about the, these numbers is you have to compare them. So, the, the, to, the total pub, public spend and the public budget is, is about 1,800 billion in Sweden. Uh, half of that is the government. Uh, the government budget is about 900 billion. So that's what you have to uh, compare with. And I mean, if all of the government's spending is 900 million, you, you quite obviously can't add 1,000 billion uh, to, to that. And you, you can't, uh, yeah. It's impossible. Somewhere around, if it's 150, 200 billion, then it's feasible. If it's more than that, it's probably going to be impossible. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, okay. Uh, 
the, I see this as a, as a problem because many, many people who, who actually are, who are in favor of basic income still talk about it as giving money to everybody. Okay, mathematically, you could say that if you give it to everybody, if you give everybody a thousand euro a month, and then you raise the taxes for everybody with a thousand euros a month, okay, then, then you could do it. But I mean, if you made that, that would make no change at all for anybody, then you're just playing with words. So I think it's much better to talk about the net effects. And then you give it to the people without any income. You, you let, it sl uh, let, the, let the benefits uh, slide down when people start making their own money. But never, never with a 100% marginal effect, as it is today. So, this is the model, ne negative in income tax. Uh, and what, uh, what I'm proposing uh, would be that, that you get this benefit of, of 900 euros, uh, when you start making um, money yourself, a third of the money you make will, will be uh, 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 subtracted from, from, uh, from the basic in income benefit. Uh, then we have, have an income tax in Sweden which is 33% uh, roughly for, for people with low or medium wages, uh, the marginal tax. And you, you would get, get to keep 33% in your pocket. So, so uh, well, it's a marginal effect of 67% or 66%. It's higher than I would have wanted. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, more, it's more than Mil Milton Friedman proposed because he mentioned 50. But then he obviously wasn't talking about how Sweden looks today because uh, I don't think, I don't know if he ever was to Sweden. Yes, he got the Nobel Prize, didn't he? So he must have been to Sweden. But <laughs> anyway, I don't think he studied, studied the, the, the current Swedish uh, tax system in detail. Uh, so yes, 67% uh, is more than I would have wanted, but it's infinitely better than 100% that we have today which you have to remember. And also, I would say, I've been talking to people who've been living uh, on, on, on these uh, uh, very low levels, and they say that when you're living on that level, every, uh, every hundred kron, every, every ten euros you get, is worth so incredibly much. It's worth, uh, if you get ten euros extra, it's worth a uh, hundred euros extra, subjectively, because uh, you can really use that money. It really makes a difference, because, because the first money you have, that, that, that only, uh, all of it goes to getting a roof over your head and, and food in your stomach. Everything that, that, that is the smallest luxury, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah it's, it's worth more subjectively. So, so I don't... Uh, it's unfortunate that it has to be so high, but I don't see it as a really big problem. So, okay, how much would this cost? Well, that depends on how many people there are and how much they earn. Now, Sweden is a fantastic country, and all the Nordic countries are equally fantastic when it comes to having lots and lots and lots of publicly available statistics. These are the income statistics, and it's divided in, into percentiles. So, so each, each of these... Uh, represents 1% uh, of the population uh, in, in working age. So we can see here that, that uh, the top, top percent, the 1%, make 120,000 a month, which is uh, uh, just divided by 10 to, to get a, a rough estimate in euros. So uh, they get like 12,000 euros a month, nice for them. Uh, everybody else may, may, makes much less. Ordinary people make between 20 and 30 thousand before taxes. So this one is before taxes, and the, the blue is what you what you get to keep. But the problem, of course, is these ones. Uh, they don't have any money at all. Uh, those are the ones we're in, interested in when, when we're talking about basic income. So I mean, the simplest way would be, be to say, say that we, if we just gave, made sure that everybody had at least 8,333, this is what it would look like, uh, this yellow part here. Uh, and of course in this diagram you, you can calculate the cost. If you took this system, which is a bad system because it still has the 100% marginal effect, but it's a much better system than, than what we currently have because you don't get the humiliation automatically. This would cost 102 billion. And remember, like I said, 
uh, as long as we're under 200, we, we're, we're okay. Uh, but we don't, don't want this. So, it's okay. Look, look, look carefully at this area when I change slides. That's <laughs> how it would look with a 67% with marginal effect, uh, like I'm proposing. So th this means that uh, the people have no income at all, well, they, they, they get 100,000 a year, uh, 8,000 a month. Uh, but then lo low income earners uh, get a little better. But then I've deliberately made it so, so that every, everybody uh, who, who makes mo more than this point, which uh, is 18,200, it, it works out at 18,200 kroners, so, so by uh, about, well, uh, 1,800 euros then. Everybody who makes less than that would get more money in the pocket. Everybody who makes more would get exactly the same amount as today. So, so that means we don't have to have the discussion of what's going to happen with, with, with those uh, 10 or 20 euros a month for, for the middle income families, because I don't want that discussion. So okay, what's the cost of this? This would cost 132 billion. Fine. Uh, we're in, in the right area. For financing, uh, like I said, mo most of the financing uh, will come from uh, removing systems that are no, no longer necessary, and then, then I got one, one tax increase. First of all, social assistance, I mean, obviously, uh, that, that's going to be replaced completely. Uh, the payouts today are 11 billion. <clears throat> I have not uh, included any savings uh, for, for the social assistants, the social workers who are currently administering this. This is quite expensive. This is the most expensive welfare system we have in terms of administration. The administration costs are between three and four billion, so, so around 35 percent of what's actually being paid out. That's a lot more than any other systems. Now, there is this idea among many people, in particular on the, on the right, uh, right hand side of the political spectrum, they believe that the bureaucracy would be even more, that it might, might even be, be more than what's being paid out, etc. That, that is not true. Social assistance, very expensive, about 35 percent. Uh, the next, uh, the, the unemployment agency got an administration cost of about 8%, and the other uh, uh, sickness insurance, etc., uh, only has like 2 or 3% in bureaucracy costs. So you can't save enormous amounts uh, of money by getting rid of, of the bureaucracy, but you can, can save a lot of suffering, humiliation, and insecurity for the people who get exposed to that bureaucracy. That's where, where the uh, great benefit is. But uh, anyway, social assistance, 11 billion. Then student aid, we've got a system in Sweden, I think it's the same in the other Nordic countries. Uh, if you're a student at a university, uh, you get some money as a gift from, from, from the government, uh, but most of it uh, as a loan. You, in Sweden you get 100,000 uh, kroner a year, which is exactly the same level as I'm proposing for the basic income. But uh, only 28% uh, of that is a gift from the government, 72% have to be paid back. In, the, in this calculation, I, I've uh, assumed that, that, that uh, students would be given for basic income. So uh, that would mean that they, they would have no debts at all when they finish uh, university. That would be very generous indeed, perhaps too generous. Uh, Generally speaking, uh, people who just grad graduated from university are not one of the most disadvantaged groups in society. It's debatable if, if you want to spend so, so much money on those. But even if you do, you, you would still get, get 17 billion uh, as a contribution. And then we got Arbetsmedling, uh, well, the, the public employment agency. Uh, they are quite expensive, 64 billion. Most of that is money that, that, that goes uh, through, through the employment agency and is handed out uh, as benefits in various ways. Uh, like I said, this is... This is uh, yeah, so I'm proposing, let's get rid of that. Let, let's have the basic income. Now, of course, uh, to, today, like I said, uh, the unemployment benefits are income related, at least in the beginning when you're, you're unemployed. Uh, this wouldn't be. So uh, there will be room for, for private insurance 
for, for people with, with medium or high incomes. But then uh, that only applies to people with medium or high incomes, and they can obviously afford it because they have well, medium or high incomes. Uh, it's up to them to decide if they want to, want to take an insurance, perhaps with the union, perhaps with a private company, or if they prefer to just mm, put money in the bank and save it. Uh, it's up to them. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> But, uh, but at least uh, uh, they will get, uh, always get the basic income to start with, so an insurance like that wouldn't have to be terribly expensive. And then uh, I do want to raise one tax, uh, uh, unified VAT. In Sweden, as in most uh, other European countries, the, 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 there are different VAT rates for different things, in particular lower VAT on food. Uh, the argument that the lobbyists from the food industry uh, used when, when, when they got this lower tax what, was that low-income households spend proportionately more on, on food than high-income uh, households. Uh, that is not true. The, the, uh, the Swedish uh, parliament Riksdagens uh, utredningstjänst, they, they got a service to, to, to calculate different proposals. They had a look at this and found that the, the, the four quarters, uh, the, the, the the poorest and the richest households, they both, both spend uh, between 15 and 16 percent on food. So it's the same. If we raise the VAT, they would both sp spend between 17 and 18 on food. But there, there is no distribution effect at all with, with this lower, lower VAT. The way I see it, it's just a subsidy to certain industries. And uh, I would much rather subsidize people than subsidize industries. Anyway. This makes a total of 142 billion uh, to compare with the 132 that, that was the cost. So we got some margin, which is good because th these are quite rough <laughs> calculations. Uh, so it looks fine that way. Yeah, I, I mentioned it before, but, but I'll, I'll talk about it again. What, what I'm not touching, again, to make it poli politically possible, uh, I'm leaving the sickness insurance as it is. I'm leaving disabil disability pensions as they are. I'm, I'm leaving all the child, uh, child and family benefits as they are. Uh, in, in, in the government's budget, the, the, there's a big uh, uh, one of the headings is support, support for, for families with children. Uh, but there are, uh, there are also in, in other places, for, for instance, well, social welfare, if you have children, you get more, etc. We would, would need to replicate those. Uh, things that's not part of, of uh, the uh, calculations I've done, but it's only going to cost a few billion, so, so it's not going to destroy it all. Um, yeah. So that's sort of it. <laughs> uh, and again, I mean, the, I've been talking about Sweden, I've been talking about Swedish kroner. My hope is, the, is that uh, you and everybody on the internet, hello internet, uh, who live in other countries than Sweden, will see this, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter to you what we do in Sweden, but, but the, that you will see this, this as sort of a, a basic income development kit. <laughs> Or, or something like that. Uh, I mean, obviously the numbers would be different in, in other countries, but I hope that perhaps some of the principles might, might be useful or interesting to people designing uh, basic income systems for their respective countries. So, yeah, questions, comments? Thank you very much for a clear... Thank you very much for this clear presentation and I think it's very important that you should think in economic and political realistic terms. Uh, when you s there are some benefits which you wouldn't include as you had this, but um, if you get uh, this basic thing and then you may get parental benefits on top of that perhaps uh, then they will be taxed according to 33 percent isn't it so uh, then 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 you will have more money than you uh, and 142 billion uh, yes uh, adding the benefit benefits for, for, for parents etc 
we will. Uh, but it, I think. Uh, I think it's only a couple of billion, so, 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 it, so it doesn't really make all that difference. I should say, I, I mean, what should happen? This is a, a sort of a back, back, back of an envelope calculation. My, my goal with doing this w w was to, to present something that, that, that is good enough uh, to, to, to warrant a proper calculation. And in Sweden, like in Finland, I, I know, the, the, in Swedish, uh, well, the government, uh, some government agency, uh, al already, uh, both in Sweden and Finland, have uh, ready systems for doing micro simulations. So when so somebody comes up with a political proposal, they can either just add the numbers or possibly rewrite a very small piece of code, and then you, then you get. Uh, a proper estimate on what it would cost. My, my goal in, in uh, well, running around giving this presentation is that somebody, either a political party that's represented in parliament or a think tank, would be, uh, become interested enough to, to ask, uh, <laughs> ask for, for a proper calculation. I don't think it's going to be very expensive at all uh, or, or very difficult at all, but, but somebody has to, to ask for it. But, but that should obviously be the next step. All right, any further questions? Tim? Yeah, hi. I'm not sure your argument on, on the VAT uh, thing is uh, quite accurate. I mean, yeah, if we like uh, view the <coughs> situation in Finland, uh, it tends to be that uh, less well-to-do people um, tend to buy uh, what they can and not what they want. So the, uh, the money kind of goes towards processed foods and things that are bad for you. And um, uh, through there, I'd highly, you know, um, argument against like uh, raising the VAT, especially on food. Mm. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't uh, raise the VAT on food. That's like. Um, not a good place to be. Even though we would, uh, even, yeah, though, uh, even uh, though we would yeah. spend as oh, much, yeah. um, we would buy. Uh, you'd end up buying uh, like uh, subpar food. Mm. So yeah, um, I mean, I can understand that you're surprised right, when I say that that, that the lo lower VAT on food has absolutely no uh, income distribution effect at all because. Uh, Everybody thinks it does. I, I used to think it did as well. But uh, uh, this uh, 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 well, research done by the Swedish Parliament's research department shows that that is not the case. Well, see, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, even though you spend as much, you, you spend it on, on like, uh, just uh, worse food than you do now. And one of the good things Sweden has going for itself is actually you know, having cheap food. Well, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the lower VAT uh, applies to all food, including real junk food. So, so that's not an argument. Uh, it's the same VAT level for, for uh, well, uh, chips <laughs> as it is for, for broccoli. I have to say this discussion about the VAT. What do you think about the argument that the VAT is basically if you are an employer in a service industry, like personally I have run a restaurant hiring five people to work for me. The VAT was in Finland the same for restaurants, lower for food. Now it's lower for restaurants also. I think this argument for this lower rate VATs is valid for to take in account that you can't hire people, you can't, your salaries, you can't diminish your VAT. If you buy VAT stuff, you can diminish it from your account for the VAT you have to pay as a company. But you can't yeah. charge for un employing people. So the VAT is basically, it's a tax on hiring people to work for you. Yes, but uh, true, but that's true of every single tax. All taxes, except environmental taxes, are harmful to the economy. Uh, 
all taxes are. Income taxes, e e income taxes, incredibly harmful uh, uh, to, to the economic system because uh, it's a, such a. I mean, the difference between between pay, paying somebody under the table and pay, paying properly legally with all the taxes. I mean, it's three or four times as expensive if you do it legally as if you do it, do it under the table. I mean, that's true. That's true of all taxes except on environmental taxes where, where you want to depress uh, the activity that, that, that creates it. So, so uh, yes, uh, perhaps, theoretically, uh, or, uh, rather, if, uh, yeah. If if we could if we could if we could, could get rid of VAT in general, I mean that would be fantastic, but that would leave a very big gap in the budget. So, so I mean we we need to have taxes. Although ta all taxes are harmful, uh, we need to have them. VAT is one of the least harmful taxes, and I can see no argument. I mean, I mean the argument that if if the VAT is lower, people in this uh, uh, companies in this uh, this industry will employ more people. That applies to, to any, I mean, you, you're talking about restaurants, why, why not shops that sell something or, or whatever industry. There, there, is, there is no reason to, to tie uh, why restaurants sh should have a lower tax rate for employment reason. I would take as an argument to look at the industry's cost of employment compared to the exchange, what you get, for example, building industry in Finland has employment cost about 30%, restaurants mm? have about 25%, socks about 10%. You could evaluate the VAT level according to the mm. cost of employment. But this is not an argument. Really, the real argument is that we should emphasize the environmental taxes and maybe land taxes and minimum taxes, both income tax, VAT, that are taxing people working. Yeah, but, uh, yeah possibly. Uh, uh, tr uh, trouble, uh, trouble is. Uh, it's rather hard to, to, to raise the environmental taxes quickly. It can be done over time. It has been done over time in Sweden. Uh, so, so, it is, so it's now quite, quite a sizable uh, so, source of income. Uh, so yes, you could that, but it's difficult. Uh, uh, so I, I, I've choos chosen to, 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 to raise the VAT or normalize the VAT to, to, to make these uh, industries uh, pay the same taxes uh, as everybody else. I mean, if you look at it as a subsidy, you could argue should, should lower taxes be seen as subsidies or not, but if you look at this su subsidy, uh, the subsidy to, to the food industry, food and restaurant industry only, that accounts for, for 35 billion out of these 50 billion. Now, as a comparison, uh, the child allowance, Bon Bidraget, costs 25 billion. The entire Swedish defense costs 50 billion. So the subsidy to the food industry is right between those two. I mean, that's a lot of money going to a particular industry when there is no income distribution effect at all. And also the VAT is very important for the government budget. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, okay. Yes. Now I need to cut it out, uh, cut this out because we are running over time. I'm allowing one short question more. <clears throat> so uh, you said the basic income wouldn't go to everybody. How do you, in practice, make it so that guy who earns like a thousand as a key per month gets that excellent amount of basic income he should get? Easily, uh, through, through the tax system. We already have a tax system in Sweden, as in Finland. Uh, so so uh, the tax authority knows exactly how much every individual uh, makes every year. Now, there's a practical problem uh, that, that the tax authorities don't know it per month. But in Finland, that will be solved by 2019. 
Uh, in Sweden, uh, the same thing is on the way. Uh, and uh, by 2018, I think, uh, the government will know exactly per month how much everybody knows. So the amount of extra administration you need is zero. Uh, I mean, nothing at all. Because uh, the, 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 the big, big computers <laughs> at the tax authority knows already how much everybody is making. All you have to do is to add, add a small little program that says that if they don't, if somebody doesn't make in a, uh, enough money to, to support herself, uh, then we sh should send her some. <laughs> so uh, we don't, don't have to add any new bureaucracy at all, which is fantastic. So Sweden and Finland and, and indeed the Nordic countries are absolutely perfect because, because we've got su such a well, technically well functioning uh, system for income tax. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you very much, Christian Eng Engström. Let's give a warm applause. We have